I'm Anthony uh, Lilly, um, and I'm the MC for the day on the grounds that on the uh, indisposition of Anthony McPartland of Anton Deck, and then the Ant available to chair a conference in London apparently today. So um, uh, that's the end of talking about the process. That's the end of talking about the creative clusters sort of getting here. What Beyond is about is about talking about the next things, how we go. Um, to deliver the things that we said we would do in those clusters programs, how we go to uh, a bigger picture and able to move even further so we can use R&D and create uh, use of technologies um, to further uh, the creative industries. So I'm not going to speak as a professor, I'm going to speak as a practitioner because I am a practitioner in the creative industries. I've been in digital media for a long time um, and I'm now back in some ways in my first um, industry of, of uh, performance and theatre. Uh, what we're going to do today then is we're, we're going to hopefully be able to take a breath, take a pause, um, think a little bit about the big picture, think about how we think about R&D. That's very meta of me, isn't it? But that's one of the things we're trying to do today is give ourselves time to, to reflect, to pause, um, to consider how we um, do this well, how we've, what we've learned from the past and what we take with us into the future. Um, today apparently is International Kindness Day. Um, I think being kind to each other in R&D is quite a good um, point of reference. So hopefully we'll, we'll find that we, we make new collaborations today, we make new friends today, um, and we deepen our relationships with each other today. Um, we structured the day around a combination of provocations, deliberately conceived to position certain points of view, um, and expert panels to try and illuminate um, key areas, whether they're skills or data or policy, um, or any uh, number of different um, fields. And we brought, um, I think, some really extraordinary people um, together to, to talk about those things from the stage and um, in the breaks and um, during the, 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 the lunch, etc. cetera. Um, so that's our intention. That's what we're trying to do. I hope we achieve it. This is the first time we tried to do something like this from the Arts and Humanities Research Council. It's exciting to be engaging with these topics. Um, as, as Andrew Thompson said, and as um, Alex said to, to some degree, um, it's been a long road here, but I, I want to make, uh, give us the opportunity to think about why that's the case and the, the, the challenges we've still got in front of us to, to ensure that R&D are actually thought of as legitimate activities in the arts and humanities. I don't think that's a done deal. I think we think, probably most of us in the room, that it's crucially important, but certainly my interaction with other bits of the research community and politicians tell me that there are still lots of stereotypes about what we mean, whether we even know what we mean um, by R&D. And right at the root of that is that the, that the literal legal definition of R&D, the so-called Frascati definition, actually defines itself in such a way as to make almost everything we do not count as R&D. So we have a job to do to um, point out that activities in creative industries, arts and, research, uh, arts and humanities research are R&D, that they can, that R&D in our field can lead to cultural and social dividends, as Peter Bazajak called it this morning, as well as the economic, and that the R&D we do can lead to the creation of experiences um, and the changes in human behaviour, as well as products, because technically R&D is something that leads to products. Um, I think we'll hear a lot today about working across disciplines. Personally, I like the idea of working post-disciplines, just working anti-disciplines even if they're getting in the way but really just thinking about what we're trying to achieve um, but being aware we have to measure what we achieve we've got to be able to know we're doing it well if we're doing it well and change course if we're not so in my last kind of two or three minutes before I move totally into MC mode just give you I'd like to give you two or three examples of of when I've been involved in R&D processes over what I realized this morning was 28 years um, in the business. I, didn't, I still think personally I'm not actually even 28 years old in my own head, so it's slightly disturbing that I've been doing this for 28 years. Um, but um, just what I've, I think I've learned from four examples, once a theatre business where we had to get somebody to code some software to do samples of uh, sound effects so we could use them on the laugh track of a live comedy show we were improvising. That was 28 years ago when there was no sampler available on the Atari ST, if you're old enough to remember what those were. And the integration between the creative work and the technology was total. And then about 10 years later when I worked on something called 4Docs for Channel 4, where we had to work out how to upload videos to the interwebs before uh, YouTube was a thing, 
Um, although apparently, as I was told at dinner last night, everything can be a thing now. Um, we had to learn that. We had to learn how to create video um, in short form. We had to learn how to open up discussion forums, things that are now actually extraordinarily commonplace and quite problematic for us in some areas. They were new. And the integration between the technology and the creative was total. Uh, and then about seven or eight years ago, I worked on a product called Wonderbook with Sony PlayStation, which was an augmented reality product in the Harry Potter universe. And I learned what large-scale R&D in a games business looks like when things are being, uh, technological challenges are being set by people who've got degrees in fine art or master's degrees in product design to engineers and animators who are working on a 24-7 uh, structure with coding teams in the Far East and content teams in LA, um, and where the speed with which the integration of technological and creative was total. And right now, so right now I'm working on a big immersive theatre project, a live um, immersive project, commercial theatre project, where we have to work out how to use holographic projection in a live show we haven't written yet, and holographic projection that doesn't exist yet to do the thing we think we're going to need to do. Um, what does that tell me? That the journey will be difficult, but rewarding, because it usually is that it's important to remember to build in joy and to celebrate the success, because sometimes you're so focused on what's wrong you forget to do that. I did that from about 1998 to about 2009 in my career. I forgot to remember that things are, can be successful and, and, and praised. Um, I forgot to remember to be happy when you get the opportunity to change something because you learned it didn't work, as opposed to being furious that the thing you'd set your mind on didn't work. I found that personally quite hard. Um, and I think I always remember, but then forget when you're in the middle of it, that R&D should be pressured. It should be under pressure. Because if it isn't, are you pushing hard enough? Are you reaching far enough? Are you trying to do new things which are really worth doing? And I, I have a guiding philosopher in my life at the moment. Uh, it is the, the extraordinary Spanish philosopher Pep Guardiola. Um, and Pep Guardiola has this brilliant sentence, which I use coaching under 10s football. Uh, Pep Guardiola says, pressure is a privilege. Because if you're not under pressure, you're not trying to achieve what you're capable of. So if pressure is a privilege. And then what I would leave you with for today, before I move into MC mode, is don't forget to be a magpie. Don't forget to take the things that work, learn promiscuously, discard the things that don't, and do what works. Um, because I think that's at the heart of R&D. And then crucially, or for me anyway, be dissatisfied with what you did so you can do it better. Um, and if I lived all of those things, I'd be a much better creative than I really am. Um, but I think when I remember some of those things, I'm a much happier creative than I could be. And with that, I'm going to head us over into our first conversation of the morning.